Okay, so we are now into tailoring the experience. This is going to be more about house rules and homebrewing. We are going to start with Bear, the Gen X GM. Sir, how do you implement house rules to enhance your game? That's a really vague question. It's to intended to be vague so that people can have different ways of answering. I just make a document and go, here are the house rules. This is what we're using in the game. Interestingly, I don't need them for anything except when I run D&D, for the most part. <laughs> I might... I might <laughs> Shit. Oh, no. No, it's not bullshit. Sorry. It's no, true. I, I might, if I'm running, say, a BRP game, take pieces from different BRP systems and put them together. But that's not house ruling. That's just combining an existing system with the options available from different versions. Mm -hmm. But when I run D&D... And all you want, Matt, it's the truth. I'm still using the BRP system. I'm just using Call of Cthulhu's this and Rune Quest's that. That's not house ruling. That's combining. If I was playing Call of Cthulhu straight and then changing stuff, that's house ruling. But I'm never running Call of Cthulhu straight. I'm never running Rune Quest straight. I'm running the basic role playing system, which 99.9% .9 of those rules exist in the big book. It's just a question of you putting it together. It's a builder game. That's the point of it. But when I run DD, I have to put in house rules. Because D and D as written is a horrible mess. Well, to be so, fair, you also house ruled the crap out of Palladium too. Yeah, because it's a horrible mess as written, with the no Palladium index. Palladium Fantasy Two is a horrible Stop mess. It. I'm sorry, with no index. I agree with Matt on that. Uh, but what there I there is an I index. You just got to buy it. I make a document that explains the house rules, what they are, and I give them to the players at the point of character creation and go make your characters with this in mind. And that's how I do it. How do you test the effectiveness of a new house rule before fully integrating it? And let's just use the example of the how you're uh, introducing the magic system if, for Cody. I don't. I test it in play. I test it on the floor. I test uh -oh. it in real in real time. I test it to see how it works in action. Because you can pontificate and theorize as much as you want on paper, but until the dice hit the table, you'll never know if it works or not. So you don't do any sort of like solo role playing or anything to just uh... no. And okay. I'm going to resist making a snarky comment about solo role playing, but uh, no, I... that that topic is in like two weeks. <laughs> yeah, and I won't be here for that one. Oh, all right, crafty. How do you implement house rules to enhance your game? Okay, so I think it comes down to a definition of what's a house rule and then what's home brewing, right? If for me, a house rule is that we come up to a point where the rules um, need a little bit of spackling over. For example, your shield rule, right? Mm -hmm. That would require a house rule because today's house rules become tomorrow's rules, right? So a house rule is, is not a homebrew. It's not like if, if I, if I have to hand somebody a document of house rules, then that's, <laughs> then that's a document of homebrew in my opinion, right? Okay. Because th those are, th those are rules that I have homebrewed rather than we're in the middle of play. And all of a sudden we come up with a situation where somebody's trying to hold up their shield and they can't take an action while holding up their shield, or they can't delay an action while holding up their shield. So I have to make a house rule that says, okay, this is one of those situations where in this particular case, you are allowed to do that. That rule gets written down and going forward, that becomes the rule. Okay. All right, so uh, I had a question that I wanted to ask particularly to that, and I don't remember what it was. So what criteria, again, we're basing this on the fact that you enjoy raw or mm -hmm. the challenge of raw. What criteria do you use to decide Fair. when a house rule is necessary? Um, when, like in the situation that you that that you came up with, right? It's it's one of those. It's it's you. You have raw, but whatever the situation that you are coming up against, right? There's just no there's no solution for it. Um, I'll, I'll give, I'll give a great example. Um, in, so I was playing in my, uh, two dragons campaign, right? The tale of two dragons campaign, which was a five E campaign. The paladin is sitting atop the parapet and 
he's watching this orc who's sitting on top of this huge scrofa, right? And he's like, he's he's getting his orc troops just like riled up, right? The um the paladin wanted to jump off of the parapet and tackle the orc off of the scrofa. There is no rule for that in 5e. There just isn't, right? Because that's stupid. Okay. So what we ruled was is we ruled that we ruled that one, he would have to make he would have to make an athletics check to make sure that he could actually make the jump. Right. And then he would have to roll an attack to see if he actually hit the scrofa. He would also, if if he if he didn't make the athletics jump, he would take the full damage of the fall distance. If he made his athletics check, then he would take half damage, and then the orc would take full damage and knock the uh, orc off of the scrofa. It ended up being like one of the most like badass moments in that entire session because rain's coming down, right? The the guys they just cast they, they cast like a, a, a cone or they cast this uh, silence up on the parapet so that they could climb up, they could murder the 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 guys that were hanging up there, and then they just watch for a minute, and then they jumped off the and then he jumped off the parapet. Of course, after that, he was surrounded by orcs, but it was still what like one of the most like badass things because this orc is just talking and like trying to rile these orcs up, and all of a sudden he just gets like hit from behind and squished into the mud. And so <laughs> that then that then became a rule of any time that you want to jump from a higher place onto somebody, you have to make an athletics check, you have to make an attack check. Okay. Any penalties since they're doing multiple things in one round? Uh, uh, yes, the attack would be at disadvantage. Oh, okay, that makes sense because it's because it's five e. That that makes sense. Well, it also has its plus twos, and minus twos, or whatever, or fives. Right, right. Um, all right, Lord Mattias, how do you implement house rules to enhance your game? Well, I again, I think I'm working with a slightly different definition of what a house rule is to me. So. Um, I'll just start with an example. So when I started my Lamentations of Elemental Evil campaign a few years ago, I told the guys who were sitting around the table, I had, I barely knew them. I had gamed them a little bit here and there. Um, one guy I've known for a while. But uh, but I was like, we're going to do this rules as written. You're going to learn Lamentations of the Flame Princess. I'm going to really learn it as well, and it's going to be great. Within about a year of playing Raw, some common complaints started surfacing people like the game they like certain aspects of it but one complaint in particular is man there's a death spiral we're constantly dying this that and the other thing and it is a tough game and there's this like massive niche protection like only the fighters get better at fighting everybody else has their plus one to attack and that's it so one of the players is a, is a game master and he plays a lot of osc and he's got like this house rule that he likes using and he, you know we started talking about it and he suggested it this house rule is a shield break rule and i think it's a great rule so we implemented it to solve a problem that was occurring at the table. Mainly, people were just getting a little frustrated with how challenging the game was. Um, again, me personally, I didn't have a problem with it, and I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll have a hundred first level characters die in a row. It, that's just the way it is. But you know, as a game master, I want to facilitate the table. I want to make sure they're enjoying themselves. So that seemed like a perfect solution. So we initiated this uh, shield break rule. Uh, you can negate all the attacks from one, uh, you know, uh, all the damage you receive from one creature by sacrificing your shield. You know, and you've lost your shield, you've lost your AC bonus, but you're not taking any damage that round. It's a good way to like sort of like keep yourself alive that one last time. Um, so for me, it's about after a while seeing like how the players are sort of that synergy between the players and the rules and kind of understanding that <coughs> and what's working for them and what's not now i can perfectly see someone saying well what if you have an entire table that just hates encumbrance you're going to get rid of that well i won't be at that table but th if that's what you're going to do um then that's what you're going to do but that's when, but to me, that's when you implement a house rule. When people play and they're like, you know, we're, we really don't like this. So if you really have a beer and pretzel table where encumbrance just bums them out, man, okay, fine. Maybe you get rid of encumbrance. I don't think you should, but maybe, maybe that's. I don't should. hand wave it completely, but I don't spreadsheet it either. I'm, again, I'm in the middle on so many things where neither yeah. side likes me, where it's like, no, I do think that counting every ounce that you have on is stupid. Every gold piece is stupid. At the same time, you have to account for your equipment. I agree. And 
and and you can't it's sorry you're not going to walk around with 17 swords on your back you know just because right. you have the strength to do it no um, right so I, right. I try to I try to balance it like I've been typing in chat here. I try to balance the role playing narrative side with the game side of it. So the war gamers get a little irked with me because oh you're story gamer. Yep, the story gamers get mad at me. You worry too much about the game. Yep. <laughs> you know, so I can't please anybody. Um. So yeah, I, and I would go so far as and I mentioned this earlier. If you're if I were to play Lamentation of the Flame Princess with a brand new group, I would again start raw. Sure. Um, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, until maybe they don't mind the death spiral. You know what I mean? And there's something else that's bothering them. You know, and that maybe we'll tweak it at that point. But I, I look at house rules as about the table, less about the rule set. Whereas raw is about the rule set and less about the table. If that makes sense. Okay. And then um, when we get there, homebrew is about the GM. But we can talk about that later. Interesting. Okay. So. Um, uh, where was I? Oh yeah. So um, yeah, that's that's how I sort of see it. Now, if you've been playing OSR games for thirty years, you will see commonalities, and maybe there is a common complaint or a common issue that constantly pops up from table to table to table to table. I think if you know, as a game master of that many years of experience, I think you're well on your right to say, "Hey guys, you know, I've been running Lamentations for like you know forever, and I've noticed this one thing, and everyone hates it." I'm going to start the game off with this house rule implemented. And if everyone's okay with it, then, you know, go, go, go for it. But generally speaking, the house rule should come in after you've been playing rules as written and the game master and the players have been sort of like playing with okay. those rules. Let, let, let me ask a follow-up and then we'll open it up to everybody. Um, it's just a quick one for you. So how do you document and share your house rules with your players? Well, with my Lamentations game, I actually had a campaign document that kept getting bigger and bigger and we started adding things. A lot of it deviated into homebrew because some of the stuff the players were doing, like they ended up creating, you know, they were in Nulb outside of the Temple of Elemental Evil and they wanted to try to get the people on their side, but they're kind of goodly and Nulb's kind of evil. So they came up with this plan that was kind of evil. <laughs> it, was like, it was this uh, 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 total like... Oh, what's the what's the expression? Um, um, well, basically, they befriended a bunch of lizard men and 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 convinced the lizard men to attack the town so they can save the town from the lizard men, and then they would feed the lizard men the dead bodies of the people from the town. It was like this crazy like political thing that they did, and then we were just kind of joking after a session, and I'm like, maybe we should make lizard men a character class for lamentations. They're all like, yeah, that'd be hilarious. So I made one. And and now that's canon in my campaign world, but that's more homebrew. You know it, I mean? but absolutely, that, but but that that explains. Now I know both Bear and Craft. You want to jump in? I don't care. Flip a coin. One of you guys just start and uh, just uh, just real quick, just just real quick is is there there comes a time when how so when you make enough house rules that it literally becomes your new body of yep. law right your new body of and you end up doing what like jeff Talanian did right you just release your own game and then your game becomes the new raw which is just a homebrew of the original but it's but because it's your own game sure. it, that is your that is now your raw because remember today's house rule becomes tomorrow's rule and so tomorrow that rule is now raw yeah, but we got enough retro clones. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, and, and, I'm, Sorry. And, and I'm not even... No, I, I mentioned Jeff Talanian because there have been interviews with Jeff Talanian where he said that he, that, that he was tired of just keep house ruling, house ruling, house ruling, that he just released his own game. But this yeah. goes for any game. It could go for Savage Worlds. It could yeah. go for 2D20. And, and, and just about any game, right? And that's, and, and, that's, and that's to my point of the guy who's been playing for like 20 years, 10 and just knows the rules backwards and forwards right. and knows. Yeah, that, I have no problem. And if someone handed me that and I knew them to be a, a player, I'd be like, or a longtime game master, I would trust them enough to try it at least, you know. So, Bear? All right, Bear. Oh, uh, I, <clears throat> I keep hearing you guys say this thing that just amazes me. Maybe I'm a tyrant. I don't know. Well, as long as we present these rules to the group and we all agree on them, and the group would agree on them, and the group would agree on them. No, no, no. House. Oh, I never said agree. Hang, hang on, hang on. You've all, both of you have mentioned discussing it and presenting it to the players and getting agreement. Maybe you didn't use the word agree, but there was a there was a implication of getting uh, consensus. 
I'm the house. If I go to the, 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 the casino in Vegas, pick whichever one, I don't get to have input on their rules as a player. You I should. Get to play you really should. <laughs> you really should. Stop your nonsense. Um, I, I don't feel at any point in time to say to my players, hey, I'm thinking in this campaign we're going to do this. Is that okay with you guys? Because then they're going to have a debate. And they're going to start talking. And they're going to start pontificating on something we haven't seen the dice do. Versus saying, we're going to be using this house rule in the game. We'll see how it plays out. If it doesn't work, we'll change it or drop it. Boom. Done. I am not a touchy-feely GM. The only reason I have session zeros anymore is because people are unreliable and cannot get their heads out of their butts long enough to make characters before the damn session zero anymore. So I, that's the only reason I do session zeros now is just to get that out of the way. Um, but ultimately, I'm a dictator. I guess. I'm the tyrant. I'm the house. Well, so I had somebody house. tell me, because one of the things, this is a couple of years ago, uh, on one of the streams where I, I, I'm very open about this. If I ever run Dungeons and Dragons, uh, you know, because I'm a second edition guy, at some point, you're going to Ravenloft. If the campaign lasts long enough, you are. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Well, you got to tell your players that. No, I don't. Because the mists of Ravenloft don't tell you that they're coming. They just happen to be there when I feel the time is right for them to take you. And yes, the paladin suffers the minuses and the clerics suffer the minuses. I play into all of that. Well, that's not fair to them because of the character that they made might not be. I don't care. That's the whole point of Ravenloft is it's not a fun place. It's not supposed to be. Oh, look at this. We got a gothic thunderstorms all the time, but it's so happy go lucky. No, it is not. And your job is to try to get, get away. You can't do that. Yes, you can. It's just difficult. Well, uh, to to Bear's point, I just I, I don't want to sound like a uh, I I roll over like that conversation to imp implement the shield break rule took weeks months to, uh, over Discord because uh, I initially was just like because it sounded like the typical complaints oh this is too hard well too bad it's a game you know embrace the challenge you know but after exactly. a while but after a while you know I it's more important to me to have a table where I can game. And at that point, and this is where I say sometimes the game master has to wear the HR hat, you know, human resources and try to figure out a way to resolve, the, you know, the situation. And at that point, I do. I do. <laughs> think but that's what Bears try to avoid. Well, well, if, if your players are fine with you, you know, you know, I don't know, speaking in a German accent and saying, ah, I'm not going to do it this way. You know, that's fine. Cool. That's fine. But so, like, for me, I want to make sure everyone's like willing to keep going and if the occasional house rule to, to address a problem that's clearly not meshing well with the players or you know I, I I don't I don't see any controversy in that okay so bear is a dictator right he's of he's love. the dictator of love. Okay. <laughs> so bear that's the name. so so Lord Mattius, you're the captain Picard where you take everybody's you know and you discuss it, and you talk about it, Whoa. and all that. No, no so not, me, not necessarily. No, I know, but I'm I'm a Captain Kirk, right? See, I think I'm. I'm going to say this rule is broken. I'm going to discuss it with my seconds. I'm going to consider what they say, and then I'm. And going then the to red shirt's going to die. <laughs> right, and then as soon as I make a ruling, it doesn't matter what my seconds say anymore because I've made the ruling. I'm going to consider what they're saying and say I'm going to make a ruling. No, that's I've, fair. I've learned but that the, if you explain why, just explain why. Look, in my setting, I don't envision it working this way, or I'm trying to do this. Really small one I made in Earth Dawn. A lot of the Earth Dawn people who know what I'm talking about are like, why do you even care? Why is this so important to you? It was psychology. That's why. Um, I, I do live in California. So, yes, they're. <laughs> um, the. Uh, what, yeah. What it is oh, now I, is I got the joke. I got the joke. you did good. <laughs> Every, everyone got the joke. It was a bad joke. Is the stay on topic. Stay on. Okay, uh, it was very funny. Is, is that uh, so? What I do is there's a rule. That if you change your action, it is a, doesn't raise your target number by two. Or I'm sorry, that is the rule. The rule is it raises your target number by two. I don't do that. I lower your step dice by two. Theoretically, it's the same thing. No, the math makes it just a touch more difficult. But also, it's psychological. It means they're not changing their actions because the first group I ever ran was constantly change in actions and then forgetting the plus two but when i change it to a minus two steps first of all they didn't want to change actions because their dice were lowered even though theoretically it's generally the same and uh they weren't forgetting 
So it, it just worked out in the end that this was just a better house rule for the group. And I do that every one of my games now. I don't ask questions. I just say, this is the way it is. This is why it is. And nobody fights. But well, that, go ahead, Bear. That's a, oh, sorry, go ahead. So two things. One, earth on people like they exist, please. <laughs> Secondly, unlike Matt, I'm not Captain Kirk. I'm not Captain Pike. I'm not Captain Picard. I'm not Captain Janeway. I am Starfleet goddamn command. <laughs> <laughs> the players are the crew of the ship on the adventure we're going on together, and they can argue about what their characters do. Character agency. I have GM agency, and GM agency lets me decide the rules that we will be playing. Well, good by. news is that's going to be a topic next year. If at some point the rule that I have decided is clearly not working, or all the players come to me and say, hey, this isn't working for us, I am a benevolent god and i will change the rule to benefit them but i'm not going to seek their input beforehand that's all okay we're kind of off topic here no, no, we no, do no, have to on, move get, on i just so, say so i don't think get, that's much let different me get from what i'm doing honestly so i'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back to, to the players. implementing the, the, the ahead, implementing sorry. the house rules to enhance your game right so the imp for for me because because i like to play raw right <laughs> I don't typically like to just hand, you know, I, I don't hand this like book of, of rules to a player. We're going to play raw and then I'm going to make a, I'm, I'm going to make a ruling, right? The discussion between the players and I is, well, what is it that you're trying to do? And we'll try to figure out what the, what the character is trying to do. And then I'll make a ruling. And then that ruling becomes the house rule. So that the next time that situation comes up, I already have a rule for the situation. All right. That's not what I was talking about, but I understand that procedure well, makes perfect well, Also, sense. you guys are talking a lot about what the next question is going to be, too. Cool. What's the next question? So, well, I have to read Super Chats first, and some weirdo okay, gave me one. Fine. Um, so, hmm, I don't know who this guy is, but he gave it's me some ka money. Ka. Uh, What's the Super Chats tonight, guys? Uh, so please super chat tonight. I did get the twenty dollars on the Rumble rant on the uh, uh, the it's Rumble side, obviously. But this is what I've noticed in the last few streams: super chats come in during segments three and four more than they do one and two. It's just weird. It's uh, when the alcohol starts kicking in. Yes, <laughs> and and Brian. And by the way, Bear, thank you very much. Uh, you, I think you're already on the list, but you're going to be on the list now. Uh, Brian James, absolutely. This is what. This is a perfect concept of what these panels should be. And especially with the back and forth, while the segments are going, unfortunately, a little bit too long because we have to end it sometime tonight, this is exactly what I'm looking for. They give their little lecture, and then they have the back and forth. They agree, they disagree, uh, they continue, you know, but kind of hashing it out without giving answers because here's with i'm sorry without telling you what the answer has to be because ultimately in the end you're going to say you know what i like what bear said no i like what lord maddie said no nah, crafty's on on the nose with this one and that's the win said and no honestly I, i'm no, <laughs> said no one I, I'm, I'm gonna say this and honestly there should be more super chats because you're not gonna find four people who are more in opposite directions. I mean, we've got north, south, east, and west on yeah. this topic. Yep. I'm north because I'm in Canada. <laughs> yes, you are. And I'm west. No, I'm south. south. I'm east. I'm in no, New yeah, York. You're south. Yeah, you're in Alabama. There you go, yeah. right? See? <laughs> you I see? mean, originally from Minnesota, but yeah, Alabama now, so I'm south. So, so uh, Brian James, that's uh, and you know what? The last few panels have been great. I know this this episode is going to go long tonight. That's fine. If it has to go long, it does. You know, we just got to keep it moving on. And so I'm going to do that now by asking Lord, uh, no, Crafty. We're starting with Crafty on this one. Uh, again, I know you've kind of touched on this, but let's let's bring it back around. Vague question intentionally because we want to hear your perspectives. Is how do you manage the potential complexities that house rules can introduce? Um, this is kind. This is kind of why I try not to make house rules until like a situation comes up where we have to spackle something over, right? And I really try to keep my house rules to a system to less than a page because it's the complexities of once you start adding like just a bunch of rules 
Then you end up with the Adventure Conqueror King 2 system, which is 1,500 <laughs> pages. pages. 1,500 pages of house rules for BX and the complexities that it brings, such as taxes. Uh, you know, there's, I mean, I mean, and, you know, what is what do they say? They say, you know, Adventure Conqueror King is death and taxes, the role-playing game. <laughs> right and hey, for, people and, are really liking it though no, so and, you know some people and, like that and, and honestly and honestly you know i i mean i'm i'm the two-time princeps of the imperial imprint so that's that's the kind of thing that i like as well but but you know what I, he did I, though I, and, and i have to say yeah. this pardon me for interrupting i also got a super chat i gotta he get to modulized but, uh, it yes 100 percent. you right. if you want to use it he's got a simple version and a complex version or right. he has a use it or don't use it and that is freaking perfect oh my god i love that so back, so back to the original question how do you manage the potential complexities is you try to keep that uh, i try to keep the house rule within the framework of raw for example your shield right is all right I know you can raise and hold a shield, but I also know that you can that that you can hold an action. Or my example of the paladin jumping off of the parapet. Yep. We know there's fall damage, and we know that you know all of that, and we know that you have to make an athletics roll for a jump. So combining those two, I'm taking the raw, and I'm basically just taking two and just kind of okay. This is now it's simple and easy. It's not complex, and I know that's a cop out answer, but it's my answer. Well, Okay, that's your answer. Let me read a super chat, and then uh, I'll get you your follow up here. Uh, Squirrel Hermit, thank you very much, Squirrel Hermit. I haven't. Are you posting video? I have not got a notification of your videos in a long time, sir. I should probably check to see if I'm still subscribed. But uh, if Squirrel Hermit's still making videos, you should check them out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh definitely great panel huzzah he says thank you very much for the 20 dollars, sir and the comment it is a really great panel tonight and i love the diversity on it this is the type of diversity i want every panel absolutely four to four different flavors of white guy what diversity yeah exactly <laughs> di proud well you know what this hobby is only made up of white guys remember that so uh the we get out of it the better according to <laughs> according to some people yeah so what steps do you take to ensure house rules don't overcomplicate or unbalance the game? Probably should have asked that one to Bear instead, but eh, you got it. That's you, Matt. It's, yeah, that's for you, Crafty. Follow your follow -up. Follow -up. Repeat the question. I thought you were asking Bear. My apologies. My God, people don't even listen to me on my own dang show. Okay, uh, what steps do you take to ensure that house rules don't overcomplicate or unbalance the game? I, again, I'm going to go back to I really try to keep it to less than a page, right? If if I start getting into like two or three pages, I'm going to go back over my house rules and see, do I, we haven't used this one in a while. Do we really need it? OK, um, you know, or, you know, I'm or I'm going to go and I'm going to discuss it, you know, with some of the some other people. Hey, how do you handle this situation? Because maybe maybe I didn't pick something up in the book and I just house ruled something that's actually in the book. Right. And I missed it in the book, even though I RTF would I missed it. Right. And so yep. that's the steps that I take is, is I try to keep my house rules to less than a page. Because again, house rules are different than homebrew. But I try to keep my house rules, my changing of the rules, light. And that's how I avoid complexity. You, you know this, and so I'll just say it. I'm firmly in the RTFM camp as well. At least mm -hmm. for the game master and for players who are serious about playing. Maybe not your first time trying to you know, lure you in. The first time's free, so to speak. But once you're interested, you, you have to. You absolutely have to. Uh, you know rtfm and people don't know what that means most of you should but just in case somebody out there doesn't read the fn manual so um if you this you know crafty without taking too much time can you quickly delineate what alexander mccree since we were talking about adventure conquer king system says about it being an intramural sport essentially that it's so it is a like a bowling league i always so you play a you you bowl for fun Right. But when you want to take that next step, you join a bowling league. You are also playing in a bowling league for fun. Right. But if you don't show up, 
for that bowling league, you're letting your team down. Just like when you don't show up for a gaming session, you're letting the other players down, right? There is a certain responsibility and a certain amount of sportsmanship that you have to come to tabletop gaming with, even though this is not a sport. You, you have to still... know in when you're bowling, uh, right. you know, <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a strike is, what a spare is. There are certain things you have right. to know in order to, yeah, to but, do it. But that's, but that's the thing, right? So, so, so you have to, one, if, if you're going to play, if you're going to play role-playing games, right, you just you have to work with the other people and you have to be on schedule. Like it's, it's a dedication and the dedication starts with reading the effing manual in my opinion. And Malachi D Genesis says this as well. And if you, anybody's looked at D Genesis, it's like a crazy chaotic game. It's not like things are duplicated and make sense. Be, it's like every clan or whatever they call it is absolutely different. So yeah, it's the same thing, but the game, you know, that's why you as the player have an onus. If you're playing a wizard, you have to know what your spells do. That's not my and, job. If you lie to me. Right. <laughs> right. But that's the thing, right? Is if a player lies about what his spells are doing, then he's not, it's, it's unsportsmanlike. Right. right. So somebody can, somebody can walk over to the frame and they can, they can, you know, or they step over the line. So, and then bear turns into Walter and says, you stepped over the line, but Donnie, you know, you if, no frame of reference. <laughs> exactly uh so so that but that's what i'm saying right is okay yeah all right let's yeah. uh let's, let's we got it let's jump on down to learn Mattias here how do you manage the potential complexities that house rules can introduce um i think well this is where rtfm comes into play and playing raw before you start house ruling come into play you need to understand the essence of the game i really do stress this like you really need to understand the syntax the synergy amongst all the rules the the unspoken things about the game um it's one of the reasons why i kind of did these deep dive videos of lamentations of the flame princess on my channel that was really more for me to try to really sort of see how all this stuff works out like when you understand that lamentations has this like real rigid niche protection between the character classes fighters fight they don't do anything else specialists the thieves they do all the other stuff but they really can't fight that they have everyone gets a plus one to attack because they're like in a, this adventurer this weird like mm -hmm. job of being like these adrenaline junkies uh looking for treasure and whatnot fighting horrific things in the dark uh, but other than that, you the fighter has that role, the specialist has a specific role, so on and so forth. When you understand that, when you start house ruling or even home brewing lamentations or any game that you're really studying, you'll be able to better understand what you're about to do to the game. You are about mm -hmm. to change it. Um, and if you understand the synergy, the syntax well enough, you those ripples, we've uh, I think Bear mentioned it earlier, they won't, or maybe it was crap, he wanted it to, he did. Um, are might not be significant waves right um and i also think keeping it narrow and this is one of the reasons why i kind of push back a little bit about the shield break rule that i implemented in my campaign i was just like hey man this this game is just tough i mean that's that's lamentations man it's it's gonna be tough just stick it out and then after a while it wasn't just him it was a few other people we'd like to see our characters actually reach fourth level you know all right Shield break, very narrow. Everybody can do it because everyone in Lamentations can carry a shield, including the magic users. They're just not very good at it, right? Um, we'll do this. And it was narrow, and it didn't upset the game balance. It's not like I gave them extra hip dice at first level. It's not like I let them start off with all this extra stuff. It's just this very narrow thing that didn't create too many ripples because I understood the, the syntax of the rules. So I really, I can't stress um rules is written when you first start playing a game mm -hmm. enough um and, I, and to be honest i can't believe i'm actually saying this i just thought i'd be arguing with crafty a lot tonight um uh, but we're kind of in agreement on a lot of things which is great so um but yeah i that that's how i do it like try to understand and keep it narrow and and don't just roll over to all the whims of your players i mean you do have an obligation to keep the integrity of the table as a game master and part of that is enforcing the rules of the game but again i would pref i don't have a problem house ruling something if that means i'm going to have a table to come to the following week meaning my players are going to get frustrated and leave you know what i mean and that's why i kind of keep an ear to the ground when i start seeing the rumbling get a little too too loud okay 
what can we do to change things just a little bit? Have you ever had a house rule or a set of house rules that became too complex because you maybe adjusted it once, adjusted it a second time, and then wrapped it in something else, and all of a sudden, like, wait, whoa, 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 what happened? And you, of course, you don't see it right away necessarily, but over time, you're like, wow, we changed this thing, then we had changed that thing, and then it just became this big blanket of uh, Yeah, this this was actually um, when I first started playing 5th edition. Um, I really liked it when I first came out. 2014 5th edition, I still think it's a decent enough system. Um, but I wanted to play Dark Sun. And so I started like, well, you know, we don't really have those rules, but I think I can do X, Y, and Z. And that's when I learned about the ripple effect. Um, and boy, did I learn. Um, at one point, I like wrote up my my own um, psionics rules. And that at the point was really more homebrew than it was house rule. Um, but, uh, it got to the point where uh, the game was like, we, I just had to say, Hey guys, let's stop what we're doing. We'll, we'll, we don't have to stop the campaign permanently, but why don't we just pick up a, get a first level? We'll just play the game rules as written. And that's when I had, uh, they just released and I picked up uh, tales of the awning portal. Love that book. Um, and all we did was dungeon crawls to just to learn the game. And that's okay. where I started seeing, like, oh man, yeah, okay, I shouldn't have done this. And uh, twenty-four strength in fifth edition is a bit excessive, you know, <laughs> things, stupid mistakes that I made, you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, again, I'm playing with my friends. I've I've been the longtime game master, so they trust me. And when I say, "Hey guys, I made a mistake," you know, we gotta re we gotta redo this. Um, they were like, "Yeah, sure, let's do it." So we just want a game. We want to have a good game. We want to you know, pretend to be fighters while we drink our beer or whatever, you know. So um, so it does happen. And I just think, again, you just got to be 95% of the time you're gaming with your friends. It's not going to be the end of the world if you make a mistake. Just own it and move on. Okay. Absolutely not. If you, if, if you make a ruling wrong, then me, as a good friend, am going to be there to tell you you're wrong. So All I right. Do. Well, with that, so let, let's There's fair. <laughs> fair. How do you manage the potential complexities that house rules can introduce? I start with the BX rules, one and two. And then As the non D and D player, how do you and manage then I make three? <laughs> and three is what I call my revised rules, and I put them all together in a nice little book, and I give them to the players. And like any other rule set, they follow them. And that's it. It's 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 no more complicated than these are the rules. If you are unaware of how they work, that is your problem, not mine. If you do not take advantage of the rules I've put in there for you to do things, or you presume without reading the rules, that's on you, not on me. Complexity is going to be a part of any game. We saw that in Palladium. We saw that when we started trying to figure out how stuff worked in the moment, no index didn't help. No no effective table of comp uh, contents didn't help. The fact that things were hidden in little paragraphs everywhere didn't help. So you make sure that your house rules are clearly delineated. Del 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 I can't speak anymore. Delineated. Clearly laid out. <laughs> Clearly laid out. I'm going to go with laid out. Okay. And presented in an easy to find format. You use simple language. You say directly what you mean for the rule to be. Not you don't gigaxy in it. You don't make. You don't leave room for interpretation. You say X does Y equals Z. Done. So you write like a technical, like a boring technical manual. No, you can have a little flavor, but you don't have to make it. You know, the purple of the mind and the thing, and then the thaw and the thing of law. No, you just go. Oh, I'm I'm in the camp of write it like a boring technical manual. <laughs> yeah, you. I am too. That's you. I'm in the camp of make it at least interesting to read, but don't have to make it into a novel. You know, you can just make it a set of rules. Now, look, this started as house rules. As I was fixing little things, grabbing rules from other BX clones that I liked and throwing them all together, and eventually it just migrated into a revision of basic expert for my table. I would never in a million years expect anyone out there to want to play this because it was from my table. Knowing how my players are, knowing how we enjoy the game, knowing the stuff that matters to 
us. Yes, I have OCD and I went crazy and made it look like an official product because that made me happy and scratched a little itch in the back of my brain. But overall, just did it the way it needed to be done. But I'm just, you, it's not rebuttal time. Be quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah hold, hold on. So have, have you run into an issue where house rules yes, were, were inconsistent or contradicted each other? And can you name that? Talk well, about I can't that. name a specific one off the top of my head, but yeah, of course, there's always going to be that problem, and you have to be careful, and that's what playing is for, is to find those inconsistencies, and remember that all of your house rules should be written in pencil, not in ink. And if they yes. are written in ink, have a bottle of whiteout handy, <laughs> so you can go, no, actually, you did mean that, you know, like, whatever the case may be. But yes, make it simple, make it straightforward, and make sure it's for your table. And then, then it won't be complicated. And if it is complicated and all your players are going, I don't understand this. This makes no sense. Your ego needs to step out of the process and take a step back and either find a way to make it understandable or analyze it and see if one of your sacred cows needs to become sacred cow ribs and leave it at that. So I, I think I said this before. I like when I do house rules, I like to explain why it exists it's not so much to get player buy-in, but so that they understand. And it usually comes down to, again, this doesn't work the way I envision something working. At this case, like the shield thing. We'll just use that, even though that's not a house rule of mine. Uh, having to, you know, up and down, up and down, or weird actions or whatever does not work within the vision. So we're going to change that. But doing the Earth Dawn thing, and, I, and I'm specifically saying that because I'm trying to stay away from TNT right now. Um, well, let's do so TMNT. I don't allow psionics in my team and T games. And that freaks a lot of people out. Like it's core to the game. Like, no, it's not. It's part of the game if you want to use it, but I don't allow teenage uh, psionics in any way, shape or form. Cause I want you to spend your points on bio E powers. What's up crafty. I was waiting. I was waiting to see if you're going to say earth dawn again. I can say it one more oh. time. Earth dawn. Uh, I mean, the ones I did in Earth Dawn, like uh, you have, you must for the first four circles of your character. That's what Earth Dawn calls levels. You must take every talent. Talents are the magical abilities. Yada yada. I'm not gonna get into all that, but you must take every one. It's not a list where you pick and choose. You have to have most of them, but you can skip a couple. No. And the reason was because the first time I ran the game ever, some jackhole decided that he was going to take one talent, one talent only, and raise that one up to rank 15 without raising anything else. And while he was a powerhouse and literally one ability, he couldn't do anything else. And he was complaining the entire time. Now you'd say, kick him out. Well, this is our static group. Mm -hmm. So I just came up with the, with the rule for every group after that. And nobody's ever complained for your first four circles. You must take every talent that's offered to your discipline. Then from there, you can start limiting things, taking every other one or, or whatever the rules state. And nobody ever complained. Nobody in my groups ever said, oh, that's stupid because I'm going to level slower or whatever. No, because I'm the game master. You trust me and I'm going to tailor the adventures to your power level. And in fact, in a way, you're going to be more diverse and more powerful with these extra talents. So, so Alexander McCreese said that there is no such thing as a rules light game just a game that has not been played enough to have house rules. He, no, he's too autistic to say. <laughs> no, he did. He, he no, he it's it's in his book. No, I'm yeah, sure it is. Said, but I'm saying this is yeah. coming from somebody who's a so, pure statistician <laughs> autist. I mean, come right. on. Now. <laughs> right. I love. Yeah. I, I, by the way, I, lo I love Alexander McCreese. We're actually possibly through a third party. Maybe going to have him on the show again. I just have to figure out how I'm going to do it because I don't do interviews like that anymore. But but again. Um, the question I've got for Bear is, Bear, could you take all the trade dress off and maybe release the PDF? Absolutely. It's, uh, I was going to release it as uh, uh, BXR was going to be the name of the game. Basic XP there you go. Revised. And guess what I decided not to do? Add yet another godforsaken <laughs> BX clone to the world. Thank well, you. as side, I would love to... Thank you. Oh, so I'll, I'll send you this with the trade dress too. It's just it's mostly just hacked together from various different games. All the art's stolen, and uh, it's it's just it's got typos. It's 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 wonderful. It's fabulous. Well, he's used, he's got my module, and that has a ton of typos in, and I haven't had a chance to go back and fix it. Play D and D. If I'm going to play D and D, this is how I want to play D and D. All right, uh, let's hit some chat here, and then uh, our next segment is going to be on homebrewing, since we've talked about rules as written, we've talked about house rules to some degree, uh, I think it's been interspersed in there somewhere. Next, we're going to talk about homebrewing, basically creating your own world, and it can be something as small as what he was saying, 
I added lizard men race. I personally would consider that a homebrew. Wouldn't be a homebrew game, but it's definitely a homebrew. That's more than a house rule. Or I, as I said at the beginning of the stream, I believe that Dragonlance is a homebrew of Dungeons and Dragons. I believe that Dark Sun is a homebrew. Settings are homebrew also because they they use the core game and go beyond. Yes, I know the crafty said earlier. Well, Hyperborea. Well, that's its own game now, but it was a homebrew. And while it still wore the D and D name and logo and whatever else, that's a homebrew until he made it his own product. Now it's his own game. You know, I get that. But I, you know, anywho, I got one super chat here left to read. Doc Flamingo says a thorough understanding of a rule is a prerequisite to overruling it. Unforeseen consequences are a thing. He's talking about uh, Chesterton's fence, right? Is there will and and this is something that we really haven't talked about. Is there are people out there that will house rule by removing rules, but they'll house rule by removing rules before they understand what the rule does, and it ends up being Chesterton's fence. Right? Is you come up to a fence or you're reading the book, you come up to a fence, and I don't want the, I don't like this fence, so I'm going to knock it down. Right? When in reality, the question that you should be asking yourself is, why is this fence here? Why is this rule here? Right? Mm -hmm. If you thoroughly study the rule and then decide, nope, this rule isn't for me, okay, and you understand the implications down the line, fine. But if you come up against, I don't know, encumbrance, right, and you're like, nope, that rule's out, then down the line, it could potentially yep. break the game. Exactly. No, I agree. Like, like you said, my person, I know no, you're not coming off on me in this one, but my issue for uh, uh, encumbrances, I just don't want to take a lot of time with it. I think it's important. I think it's necessary. And I don't want to say, well, my character can lift 135.46 pounds. And then this is eight ounces. This is 16. Ounce, or I guess I'd be pound, but you know what I'm saying? Like this is one pound, eight ounces. I don't know. There's a, there's, there's a better way to do it. And other games implement it better or you just again house rule it where yes we're still going to handle encumbrance i like the way free league does it that might be just a touch to rules light but i like the way free league does it i think it's simplistic but meaningful anywho i, I like what it was too that? i like it too I, I i'm a fan of free league stuff um and i think you know, Crafty's right. Like, you, you shouldn't just house rule something by taking it away without fully understanding it. Changing it, maybe. You know, and that's why I go back to my earlier example. I, if if you're at a table, and or I'm sorry, that table decides that they just hate encumbrance, and they're going to have the endless backpack, you know, with all the swords and the shields and everything like behind them. Uh, that's probably not going to be my table. But you know, who am I to tell? They're not having fun. You know what I mean? Uh, and yes. Lamentations of the Flame Princess uh, slot base system is awesome. It's like I, I think they handle it, it. That game handles it, covers perfectly, in my opinion. It's about it. cool. So check it out. All right. Well, we are going to bounce on into uh, the next segment here in just a moment. The charity we support is the Wounded Warrior Project, a national nonpartisan organization whose mission is to honor and empower wounded warriors. Please refer to the video's description for a link to where you can make your hopefully tax deductible donation. And for those who are watching live right now, yes, there will be a 24 hour charity live stream in support of the Wounded Warrior Project on Monday, November 11th. It doesn't look like Heathen Dog's going to be running his game because for whatever reason he couldn't get people to sign up for it, which I find very, very odd. Uh, he's had very successful games in the past. And if you're like, oh my God, no, 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 I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it, well, you can get a hold of Heathen Dog on our Discord. Yeah, that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, <laughs> and it's going to be Paranoia 2nd Edition. How can you not want to play Paranoia 2nd Edition? Such an amazing game. But anyway, so uh, look forward to that on Veterans Day or... If you want to watch a 24-hour live stream, plan to have some good guests. If it ever gets dull and boring, I'll play a video game. I'm going to take a nap in there somewhere for Heathen Dog to actually be on and do his thing, whatever it happens to be at that point. And But uh, the entire point is for the Wounded Warrior Project, so I hope to get some donations that day. <laughs> 